While this was a long time coming, All Hail King Julian is easily one of the most overlooked TV shows of all time. I'm not even kidding man, there is just so much greatness behind All Hail King Julian and it pains me that it hasn't gotten the respect that it deserves. And sure, the Mort clips existed, but there were really only a massive spike in Mort theory content and always die down fairly quickly. But this, it honestly boggles my mind that so few many people are talking about it. I mean, even with the show's peak mid to late last year, it felt like people were more interested and more to making creepy and offensive comments about women rather than the amazing show that it came from. Actually, amazing might be an understatement. This is literally one of the most shockingly sensational things that have come out of recent cinema. And if you're new here, you're probably wondering why a human being is so hyped about a children's TV show featuring King Julian from Madagascar as the main character. Well, I believe that's what we're going to be finding out today. So many people have prejudged this work of art as being yet another haha -ha, funny kid program makes poop jokes. Isn't that funny? So funny! No. All Hail King Julian is way more than what I just described. It's actually got so much depth and genius behind these dark themes that you wouldn't really find in an animated piece of media, while also maintaining a hysterical and a flat-out comedic riot at the same time. So let's get it. Let's kick things off with one of the show's most simple areas to cover, the characters. Yeah, this show has incredible characters that once again you would never expect to see going in. Even the smaller characters help build the plot of every ongoing episode and giving a sense of clarity to the themes and motifs that these writers and creators are going for, and the stronger and more central characters are all so crucial to everything that they're in. I'll dive more into King Julian later on, but it's just so insane how incredibly well written each of these side characters are. From the kingdom's perspective, I found literally every single one of them a blast to watch. Ted is the most bisexual character to ever exist and he is amazing. Ted's goofy, artsy vibe feels so warm and realistic. Andy Rich's line delivery is just mwah, chef's kiss. He's just so much more different from everyone else and yet his chemistry works. Horst is paranoid as all hell, sure, but once again, he's just amazing. The sheer entertainment that comes out of this character and his funny style is off the charts. It might seem a bit played out with the beverage joke, but to me, it's one of the funniest running gags in the entire show. Same with the whole ACL, oh, I've broken this and that. All of his lines and side plots fit so well, really great character. I'm not really the biggest Willy fan out there, in my opinion his we're all gonna die joke throughout the entire show was definitely funny, but sometimes I wasn't really feeling it. Sometimes it didn't quite fit the tone that whatever episode was going for and was occasionally strictly held together by the other characters' responses, but who the hell am I to talk? He is still a hilarious character and that a lot of the time he makes what would be a good scene great. Pancho, I've already talked about him before, he might actually be my favourite citizen character in the entire show which is saying a hang of a lot. The line delivery is top notch and his overall personality is just so buried, maybe my favourite moment from him and one of my personal favourite moments from the entire show as it is, is in the episode Who Arted where he and Horst are at an art gallery and they're giving their opinions about a watermelon. Horst says something that you would expect from him, but then Pancho goes and articulates how it's a representation of how the creator of this piece is forcing us to examine it as a symbol rather than a source of nourishment. Come on man, there is just so much to gain from this exchange. Not only that it's hilarious, but it also gives insight into the nature of artistic expression. It's really amazing and just, yeah, Pancho was really amazing. Even everyone else, Todd, Hector, Dorothy, Gigi, Masakura, Timo, Tammy, the one and only Butterfish, our lord and savior Butterfish, all of them are great characters that were played out to a perfect degree and any other characters that I forgot to mention, I love you too. Then we got the three main supporting characters, that being Maurice, Clover, and Mort. So Maurice. I don't think I've actually expressed my true feelings about this character yet on the channel, but okay. So yeah, Maurice is exceptional. You would expect him to just be like a donkey, but without the same sort of impact, right? But they completely turned that around in the show by giving him so much depth and integrity. He's so lovable and relatable while also having a ton of unique characteristics that give him so much personality. I love how sensitive he is, and that leads to many, many funny moments. But at the same time, his comedy is balanced out with some really tragic backstory. People often forget that his life was actually meant to be nothing more than a ritual sacrifice. As a bit of a backstory, every millennial, a beautiful aye baby was born. Yes, Maurice was an aye it came as a shock to me too. 
this baby was taken to these sacrificial grounds and were to be handed over to higher beings. However, Maurice didn't actually end up being in the ritual and was adopted by unknown people who I might find out later in the future. His loyalty is unmatched. In fact, at one point he actually falls to what he thought was his death so that Julian could live. That selflessness right there. Maurice is amazing. Hats off to Kevin Michael Richardson for displaying such an incredible character that I love. Clover wasn't in the Madagascar movies, but that really plays damn well into who and what she represents. She starts off as just Julian's bodyguard, but then becomes his head of security in the same episode, and over time she and Julian begin an actual friendly relationship. They become great friends not just professionally, but also personally. Clover is such an amazing character that goes through so much over the course of the show's running time and ultimately has one of the greatest character arcs I've ever seen in the show. She goes from being a lonely and isolated individual to being one of the most well-respected and loved characters out of them all. She works so well with not only the comedy and her hilarious British accent, love you guys who are British, but also the deeper stuff too. The fact that she's a twin makes it so much more effective because we get to see the competitive side of her and as an add-on, the side of hope and sadness. She was never her parents' favourite and was often unappreciated by even her closest friends, but she didn't give up on reaching her goals of finding happiness and the fact that the show ends on her part works wonders for that reason. Clover was easily one of the best decisions that the show decided to make and in a lot of ways All Hail King Julian wouldn't really be the same if it weren't for her. Mmm, Mort, Mordecai, Mortimer, you name it. There is just so much here to say, and I gotta save some of it for its own separate video in the future, but man, this guy's the greatest. Mort absolutely carries the comedy in this show, fight me if you disagree. The line delivery couldn't be more perfect. The lines in general were just so expertly written and precise towards this absolute gem of a character. We all know the theory, so I'm not gonna talk about that, but wow, does he just have so much depth, let's put it that way. Mort is kind of like the comedic relief for the show, but done in such a crazy and genuinely insane way that you honestly forget all about that. Mort is the result of the creators taking a bunch of meth and trying to sit down and make a character with serious intentions. It shouldn't make sense, it shouldn't work, and yet it does. There is the Mort personas, I think you all know how I feel about the Mort personas. This is some of the most adrenaline that I've ever gotten from any character, and I think that it's owed to by the horrifyingly great creativity of these writers and the voice of Andy Richer. Mort is just the most terrifying character to exist, and I love him, and let's be honest, so do you. All Hail King Julian has some of the most fitting and epic soundtracks of any animated piece of media. Literally the only thing in animation that has a better fitting soundtrack than this is Shrek 2. Shrek 2. Music like this just doesn't happen, but All Hail King Julian pulled through and delivered such banger songs, Swagnificent, Until the Sun Comes Up, Who's Da King, Boom Da Party, Big Stacks, Our Life, they're all just such incredibly exciting songs while also staying within the show's boundaries. I Love Your Toes and Kika Clock are two of the funniest songs to ever exist. Watch them and let the harmonious lyrics swell in your ears. True Bromance is the best duet in all of DreamWorks, it tells us so much about the friendship of Julian and Maurice and totally deserved its Emmy. One of the best scenes in all of season 2 and probably one of my top 15 favourite scenes in the entire show overall. But as for the best main disco song to listen to, it's Magnificent, an absolute must listen to and I do on a weekly basis. It's so soothing to listen to and just wow. However, there is still one more song that I like even more. That song is It's All Good. I can't stress enough how utterly phenomenal this song is. It's the song that's been able to make me feel happy even at my lowest points. It's the song that makes me feel so good about myself even when my conscious is thinking otherwise. Words cannot describe just how much this song means to me, and for that reason, it is my favourite song of all time. That is the power of All Hail King Julian's soundtrack. There is a whole other feel behind these songs outside of the show that so few people are noticing. They set the tone for the show and are all so great. <sighs> then we got the villains, the bad guys of the show. Yeah, it's honestly shocking how well they were able to make these antagonists. Not all of them are quite perfect, but the ones that are... Oh my gosh, they just hold so much power and greatness against the heroes. They all have an actual motivation for what they're doing and are all so fun to watch. I'm for sure going to make a personal ranking video on these guys in the near future, but I think that there's no harm in expressing some feelings about them right now. 
Carl is a really enjoyable character. He's just got so much emotional and literal connection with Julian. He's got some of the funniest jokes and running gags in the entire show. The voice acting is incredible. His ideas on how to overthrow King Julian are menacing and creative beyond sanity, all while being able to have weaknesses and depth that aren't just flushed out. Yeah, really the best kind of villain that there is. Uncle King Julian is the same, but not quite with the same impact as Carl. Crimson is great all round, but it's Koto that in my opinion steals the show as the best villain out of all of them. Spoilers. The creators actually had to make the other villains somewhat good, just so that the spotlight could be put on Koto. He is the most dangerous and actively threatening villain when he's on in the Exiled season. A lot of people forget this, but he's actually kind of a twist villain in a way, and they play that out perfectly. I'll say more in the villain ranking, but man y'all, these dudes are just so damn great at what they do and the threat that they have towards the good guys. Okay, I want you to stare me in the eyes right now and tell me that All Hail King Julian doesn't have some of the most incredibly hilarious comedy in the medium of animation. This show is a comedic riot from start to finish. In fact, comedic riot might actually not do this show justice. 95% of the jokes here land. No, no, they don't just land, they soar. Generally speaking, I would usually laugh out loud on twice, maybe thrice in a fairly great comedy movie, like Shrek or Madagascar. Yeah, I don't really laugh that easily in movies, but some of the funniest episodes in All Hail King Julian made me laugh somewhere around 6 and 10 times. That is a 20 minute episode absolutely annihilating a 90 minute movie. And I'm not like a 6 year old child that would basically laugh at anything I understood. No, this show is legitimately a blast of a comedic time. Every episode gets a laugh out of me at least once. Even the worst episodes, which are still decent, make me laugh. I'm a pretty big hit on this guy when it comes to slapstick, but this show does not fail whatsoever. Yes, it uses vomit and burp occasionally, but those vomits and burps usually have some thematic purpose, most of the time. The comedic timing as well just works so well, and the voice performances contribute greatly to that. It seriously feels like the show comedy was written just for me, even though that sounds really selfish now just saying it out loud. It's no surprise that All Hail King Julian has easily a 10 out of 10 score in the comedy department. This leads on to the amazing script that the show was given to play around with. The writing is just so witty and exciting and everything works together perfectly. It makes the viewing experience so much cooler because you're always wondering what snappy line of dialogue is going to come next. The writing is very silly and immature but despite that they know when to distinguish the comedy and the drama which leads me to th all Hail King Julian may be one of the funniest TV shows out there, but that's not the main reason why I love this show. The hidden themes and messages behind this show are so compelling and genius. It doesn't feel real. All Hail King Julian tackles so many mature themes in its runtime such as depression, love and loss, jealousy, money consumption, poverty, capitalism, manipulation, indoctrination, isolation, and so much more. If you view this show but instead with the lenses of any of these themes, it goes from a comedy to a drama. So many times I've left episodes wondering just how people could watch this stuff and think, yeah, it was alright, because it's so much more than that. The use of this subtle dialogue is extremely effective and has made me cry on multiple occasions simply because I don't get how a show that is intended for younger audiences is able to create this kind of an emotional response in me. Speaking of which, I wanted to talk about the central character in this story for a tiny bit, King Julian. We all know him, he's the dancing monkey from Madagascar. But after watching this show, he becomes a hang of a lot more than that. In the movies, he's basically just the funny guy comedic relief that pops up every 20 minutes. But here, you actually feel for him and what he's gone through. They introduce his tragic past very naturally, and you instantly begin to learn more and more, which leads to the perfect character that we know and love. Julian goes through one of the best character arcs that I have ever seen in my life. He starts off as the party prince, the irresponsible guy that was unconsciously taking advantage of his youth, but then his uncle gives up the throne and puts him on the spot as the new king of the lemurs. The show presents him learning more and more about the goods and the bads of leading so many people, and by the final episode, he becomes the legendary king and leader of not only the lemurs, but 
but all of Madagascar. The support that he received from his peers helped him to pull through, even in the toughest of times. Never do you find in the show that Julian is a complete and utter outcast. He always has Maurice and Mort and Clover by his side, even if some of them are on the other side of the archipelago. And god, that ending! I just can't stress enough how perfectly the show concluded. Juliana has now grown into a selfless person who doesn't need to be the centre of attention all the time. And damn, the show gets that. And for that reason, Julian is one of the top three best characters in animation. All Hail King Julian made such a great name for itself in my eyes, but it also did one final thing. It perfected the Madagascar legacy. There is something that this franchise has been trying to do ever since that first line from the first movie. This was to make the most craziest, zaniest, wackiest thing in existence while also containing some genuinely heartfelt and emotional parts to it. The trilogy ended, and that was it. They had come pretty close a couple of times. The first movie was a riot of a comedy, but frankly it didn't quite get any good drama behind its belt. The second movie at least attempted to have emotional bits, but I was too busy looking into the glorious eyes of Moto Moto, and the third film was… no. I thought that there was no hope for there to be a quote unquote perfect Madagascar piece of work, but then All Hail King Julian came along and absolutely demolished any chance of that not happening. It's literally got everything you could ever want out of not only Madagascar, but also cinema in general. It's got weirdly genius writing, incredible characters, hilarious jokes, banger music and emotional investment. And it's about King Julian. I don't toss around the word masterpiece, but yeah man, this is it. This is the peak of animated comedy. This is the peak of deep and meaningful drama. This is the peak of the Madagascar franchise. I think that it's my favourite TV show of all time, literally a 10 out of 10, and I would give it an 11 if it existed. In fact, what are you still doing watching this video? Go watch All Hail King Julian, go re-watch it if you're like me who's seen it in its entirety over half a dozen times. Thank you for watching and goodbye, until next time when I do another All Hail King Julian related video in about a week. Woo!